How do you know what He's called you to do? Well, I think uh, we have visions that are on track. I think we have uh, intuition. I also think that we all have secret powers. They're called spiritual gifts. And if we can start to unravel those spiritual gifts and look at them and act on them, it might lead us to a greater purpose in life. From New Life Ministries, this is Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn. I'm Stephen Arterburn. And Going Deeper is all about taking the tough issues, the hard issues of life, looking a little bit deeper inside so that we can gain some insight into our lives. Hi there. Thanks for joining me for Going Deeper. We're going to go a little bit deeper into healing, healing being a choice. Now, we can't always choose to receive physical healing, but we can make some choices that usher in or give us the greatest potential that we could experience some level of emotional, spiritual, and even physical healing. Now, let's just say you were attracted to this because you, you need physical healing. And maybe you think, maybe you bought into this lie that other people have told. Well, you know, I'm not healed because there's some kind of spiritual problem going on with me. No, not true. One of the greatest examples of this is a gentleman that I met now, I guess, 16 years ago in Utah. He was dying. He was in hospice. He was so dying, he was already in hospice. He had brain tumors. It was stage four cancer, brain cancer. And uh, he, was, he was literally close to death, and they decided that they would bring him in and do a final MRI just to see what was going on uh, with him. So, this guy was an atheist, uh, had no faith. He only had access to one emotion, that was anger. And so, they bring him in, they do the MRI. He was married to uh, a former Mormon who left the Mormon church, but left uh, having known, having developed a relationship with and accepted Jesus Christ. They do the MRI, and the doctor takes an extremely long amount of time before coming in. And when he does come in, he says to this atheist, I don't know what it is, but your brain is free of all the tumors and free of all cancer. He says, we call this spontaneous remission. And his wife said, we call it a miracle. Well, now, here's what happened. You'd think he'd go, wow, yay, great. No, only had access to anger. He was one angry atheist. And in his anger, hearing this, my son said, well, maybe he realized he had to start paying bills again. But in his anger, he threw a piece of medical equipment across the room, broke it. They had to... They had to uh, medicate him, they had to restrain him, and eventually, you know, he, um, he got his act together, resumed his life, and a year later, he came to Christ. What I love about this story is he didn't earn healing. He wasn't a spiritual giant. He was an atheist. So don't be thinking that if you haven't had a physical healing, that that's because of some spiritual inferiority. It's just not there. Now, this choice that we're going to talk about today is the choice to serve. Serving is a very healing thing, and it can also be a very sick thing in the wrong context. So a lot of people fall into this lie that, well, you know, I can't really serve or help anybody until I am completely uh, mature and everything's great. Well, that's not true. A lot of people, uh, like in the recovery from alcoholism, they'll, they'll go to a meeting and they'll start to serve and help immediately by getting there early and making the coffee. So I'm not talking about serving by being up on a stage. I know a guy, he, he was um, instantly healed and he thought that everybody ought to be able to be instantly healed. And, and so he started teaching that. But you know, his instant healing didn't make for instant maturity pretty soon he fell away. He was talking too much too soon. So we have to do it in the right timing, but don't think you have to have your total act together before you can lead or serve. 
God's been using broken people for a long time, but we just have to be in a place where we're stable and secure and other people are saying to us, yeah, I think it's ready for you to leave. So we don't want to fall into the lie of, well, I can't ever help until I'm fully healed and restored or the lie, I need to help right now. I need to go from being a drug addict living out on the street to a senior pastor uh, in a big shot church teaching everybody. No, it doesn't work that way. Now, a lot of times we think, I'd love to serve, I'd love to help, but I'm not qualified. Well, if you don't think you're qualified, you have to, you literally have to look at this story of Gideon in the Old Testament. Gideon was from the weakest family that existed at that particular time. And in his family, he was the weakest guy in the weakest family. And God came to him when he was hiding out in a wine press and says, I want you to be the leader of the army. And, and here um, he was not, he wasn't the big general, five-star general or anything. So when you look at it, he was a weak man from the weakest clan with a weak plan. That's, that's the way I look at it. And, and he won the battle because he had tremendous faith in God and let God do for him what he couldn't do. I'm just saying to you, you can't do everything, but you can do what God has called you to do. How do you know what he's called you to do? Well, I think uh, we have visions that are on track. I think we have uh, intuition. I also think that we all have secret powers. They're called spiritual gifts. And if we can start to unravel those spiritual gifts and look at them and act on them, it might lead us to a greater purpose in life. Within one week, three people told me I had a spiritual gift I didn't know I had. And it was the gift of hospitality. If you were to come to our house, I would be the person, if you were going to spend the night, I'd make sure there was water by your bed. Uh, I would make sure you had little x lax chocolate x lax on the pillow, you know, all that stuff, because it comes naturally to me to be hospitable. So I can't brag about it. It's a gift I have. Somebody else, they might do that. It's the hardest thing in the world. And they're the ones that, that deserve credit. But when you have a gift, it's a question of, do you act on the gift or not act on the gift? Do you use it to serve or not? If you use it to serve, I mean, you're doing stuff that other people might think is impossible, but you have a spiritual gift from God, whether it's teaching or administration, preaching, all sorts of different spiritual gifts. I'll give you some scriptures where you can find out about it. Romans 12, 1 through 8, Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, 1 Peter 4, 9 through 11, and 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10 are some places you can start that journey for what is my secret power. But I want to tell you, if you are stuck, obsessed with yourself, and you've never reached out and tried to heal another person or help another person, you really might be missing something pretty spectacular in your life. In Matthew 25, it says this, When you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. Serving others is actually serving Christ. So, what are you waiting for? Don't wait to try to find where it is you can serve. God has a calling on every person's life, including you. And when you accept that call, you start to do some things maybe you never dreamed you would do. If you need some help, you can call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE or you could, right here, grab a copy of this book, Healing is a Choice, Workbook is Included. Uh, you could call 1-800-NEW-LIFE and order it from them. It's helped a lot, a lot of people. Until next time, thanks for joining me. We're going to look at the 10th choice to healing. And I hope and pray you'll join me in that it could be maybe the thing that's been missing from your life, from your restoration journey. We love you here. We want to be here for you. Call us, contact us. 1-800-NEW-LIFE is a great number. Thank you for joining me for Going Deeper. I hope something I've said may have helped just a little bit. If you have a question you'd like me to answer or comment, 
just email me at stevesocial at newlife.com. I'll see you next time. If you want to support Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn, be sure to subscribe so you never miss another episode. And if you know someone who would benefit from this episode, be sure to share it with them. See you on the next Going Deeper with Stephen Arterburn from New Life Ministries.